A rare weekly signal was generated this week. A signal that has only occurred five times in the last 32 years. What does it mean for stocks? To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. This is a weekly chart of the S&P 500 as of the close on Friday, November 27, 2015. This is the S&P 500 weekly here. This is a week of trading activity. This is a week of trading activity. This is what's known as the Copic curve. The signal that we have, and it's extremely rare, is the weekly Copic curve during the plunge in August eventually dropped below negative 12.5. The second part of the signal occurred this week. We recaptured the zero line. What's the Copic curve? We never talk about the Copic curve in these videos. Well, there are a lot of things that are used as mathematical inputs in the CCM market model that we do not cover in these weekly videos. This text here that we've blown up comes from stockcharts.com if you want to learn more about the Copic curve. The Copic curve is a momentum indicator. The goal of this indicator is to identify long-term buying opportunities in the S&P 500 and the Dow. At least that's what it was developed for. It was originally developed to be used with monthly charts, but it can be used on all time frames. The signal, again, according to stockcharts.com, is very simple. Identify buying opportunities when the indicator moved from negative territory to positive territory, which is exactly what's happened here in 2015. We dropped below zero and we're back above zero. That's not particularly rare on a weekly time frame. What is rare is how low the indicator got indicating that momentum was extremely weak earlier in 2015. How rare is this signal and what can we learn from it from a probability perspective? Remember last week we talked about how long it can take to get back to break even in the stock market. The Copic curve is something that can help us understand when the market is improving from a risk reward perspective. So it doesn't do you much good to manage risk during a bear market if you don't have signals that help you get back in after a bear market or get back in after a correction. The purpose of this graphic is to demonstrate with facts how rare this signal is. So it's very rare for the weekly Copic curve to drop below negative 12.5. The line here is negative 12.5 and then recapture zero within the context of a bull market. Why are we using in the context of a bull market? Because right now the data is telling us we're still in a bull market. That's subject to change, but the facts we have in hand right now do not align with a bear market yet. So until proven otherwise, we're in a bull market. 1987, the Copic curve drops below the blue line and then recaptures the zero line. 2002 it happens, but the reason why we have this in blue, because that's not really in the context of a bull market. We'll still cover that really to show how rare it is for the Copic curve to drop that far. These signals here are more relevant because they occur within the context of an ongoing bull market. Drop below negative 12.5 on the weekly and then recapture the zero line in 2010. It happens again in 2011 and it just happened again this week. So what happened in the stock market in these historical examples. So now we'll walk through each of the historical cases and all of the historical cases. And that's important because we're not cherry picking the cases here. We're looking at all of them that occurred within the context of a bull market. 1987 here to show you how rare 
it is to drop that far. The Copic curve, the weekly Copic curve, drops below negative 12.5 and eventually closes back above the zero line. In terms of our analysis, we will look at the change after the signal occurs. So in this case, what happened next was the S&P 500 gained 37% over the next 83 weeks. The Copic curve signal is that this, from a probability perspective, is a good buying opportunity. In this case, it was very helpful. This example also illustrates an extremely important point. This is not a short-term timing signal. Case in point, the bullish signal comes. This is a weekly chart here. The market is extremely weak for several weeks and then even struggles here and here. This is a longer term signal and it doesn't mean our expectation is for stocks to be green next week or even in the next 10 weeks or so. As long as the signal is in place, it tells us from a probability perspective to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes. Same exact concepts. This is example number two. This is the S&P 500 weekly. This is 1990 here. This is the beginning of 1994 here. The signal, the weekly Copic curve drops below negative 12.5 and then eventually recaptures the zero line. Our analysis looks at what did the stock market do after the signal. So from this point here to this point here, the S&P 500 gained 45% and the bullish signal in this case was helpful. In this example as well, this is not a short-term signal. After the signal came, the S&P 500 dropped for one, two, three weeks and then rallied sharply. The next example of the rare signal occurred in late 1998. The weekly Copic curve drops below negative 12.5 as it did in 2015 and then eventually it recaptures the zero line providing the probabilistic buy signal. In this case, was the rare signal helpful? Yes, from the buy signal point to this point here, the S&P 500 gained 38% over the next 16 months. This example here is the one that we have to caveat that it doesn't fully meet the criteria, but it's good to look at it because it shows you how rare it is that weekly momentum or the Copic curve drops this low. In this case, we're coming out of a bear market. So this example needs an asterisk next to it, but the concepts are the same. We're below zero here. We recapture the zero line on a weekly closing basis. Was the signal helpful in this case? Yes. After the signal, the S&P 500 gained 29% over the next 45 weeks. One other takeaway that we'll find here is that the markets over the past few years have been difficult. This signal has only occurred five times within the context of a bull market. This week would be the sixth time. And you'll notice out of those six, Half of them, or three of them, have occurred since 2010. 2010 here, S&P 500 weekly, same theme. This is a really good example because it's very similar to what we're seeing today. The weekly Copic curve drops below negative 12.5. The buy signal from a probability perspective occurs when you recapture and close above the zero line on a weekly basis. After the signal came in 2010, the S&P 500 rallied 21% over the next 32 weeks. It's an extremely rare signal, but we saw it back to back 2010. It occurred again after the correction in 2011. The weekly Copic curve 
drops below negative 12.5 and eventually we get a weekly close back above the zero line this is your probabilistic buy signal was it helpful in this case yes the s p 500 after the signal gained 23 percent over the next 19 weeks the market model tracks the copic curve in this signal on numerous charts and some other time frames as well as risk on risk off ratios we can find other examples here's one nasdaq weekly drops below negative 10 in this case and recaptures the zero line this week this is your probabilistic buy signal looking out weeks months or years just to show you one historical example nasdaq weekly 2004 we drop below negative 10 here, which is exactly what happened on the weekly chart of the NASDAQ in 2015. And then we recaptured the zero line. This is your probabilistic buy signal. What happened next in this case? The NASDAQ rallied 14% over the next 10 weeks. The market model takes hard data or facts that we have in hand and constantly is asking the question, are we allocated properly based on the facts that we have in hand? So how is this helpful? Right now, the facts that we have in hand, this leans bullish, looking out several weeks, several months, maybe even several years. That's based on the look of it right now. Is it possible for the signal to be erased? Absolutely, positively, yes. How would that happen? The weekly copy curve drops back below the zero line within the next few weeks, and that starts to open up the beginning of a bear market probability door. But the key here is that's not what we have in hand right now. The facts that we have in hand, even bigger picture, align with this look, which says right now, it wouldn't be surprising to see the stock market drop for a few weeks or rise from here. It could go either way in the short term. But the bigger picture, based on the facts that we have in hand, and that's the reason why we chose the Copic curve this week, because it illustrates the big picture well here. The big picture is, regardless of what happens in the short run, the facts in hand say keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes. Can those facts change? Yes, they can change, and that's why maximum flexibility is so important. Even if the Copic curve signal that we just covered, the rare signal, turns out to be bullish, looking out weeks, months, or years, nothing says that next week or the next few weeks might not continue to be indecisive or even bearish. We will cover information that looks at why we have been patient in the last two weeks the market model has only made one trade in the last two weeks because we need the market to prove some things to us this is one of them you may have seen tweets where we say the weekly trend leadership relative to the s p 500 based on our etf scoring system is weak we'd like to see some cyclical or economically sensitive ETFs like XLB, which is materials relative to the S&P 500, we want them to lead clearly. We want their trends to flip over. And we have seen some leadership off of these lows. So this is a good guidepost here. This is an inverse head and shoulders on the daily chart of materials relative to the S&P 500. And this is a good setup. Why? An inverse head and shoulders that occurs near a peak isn't really what you're looking for. An inverse head and shoulders is a probabilistic bottoming pattern, which means a good one from a probability perspective occurs after a bearish trend and a decline. So we have that here. Materials have been out of favor, and then we have some selling here, a spike in selling, and then this typically is the last flush out of sellers. In this case, this is a bullish setup 
that hasn't flipped over to a bullish signal. We need to clear this neckline here. So this is an excellent guidepost for the entire market. If we are able to clear this neckline, the target would be this pink line here, which would take us up to a very, very logical level. Looks relatively easy for this ratio to take back the plunge here and move in this direction. It's going to be more difficult for it to clear this trend line here and resistance here. Moral of the story, from a probability perspective, we would prefer to be patient using this signal in isolation, which we don't use, until we actually see a breakout here. Right now, this isn't a bullish pattern because it only becomes bullish when we see the breakout. Below this level, based on this signal, patient. Above it, this is a daily chart, so you'd like to see a daily close above these blue lines. That's a good sign for materials and also a good sign for the S&P 500 looking out days and weeks. Is there anything that may help us with that previous inverse head and shoulders pattern from a probability perspective? I think the answer is yes. This is materials in isolation. This is a daily chart here. This is price here, XLB. The green line shows us that we just made a higher high. This high here is higher than this high here. In this case, we have a bearish divergence with daily RSI. It did not make a higher high. So right now, this chart is telling us probably not to jump the gun on the neckline. And this is a prove it to me chart. We'd like to see materials break above this level here. And notice the high on Friday was not above that level. We'd also prefer to see it break above this downward sloping trend line here. If it can get into this area here, that's probably similar to the move in the inverse head and shoulders pattern it could probably run but it hasn't broken out yet and this is a prove it to me be patient yellow flag at least from our perspective our objective with charts is not to find charts that help us feel better about our positions or that help us with our bias our objective with charts is to find charts that help us stay on the right side of the market, and that's why maximum flexibility comes into play. We showed this chart last week, a week ago, where we said this was a prove it to me chart. We haven't proven anything on this chart, and this area here is still acting as potential resistance for the NASDAQ. So like the neckline on the inverse head and shoulders, this is a good be patient and see what happens level. If we move into this level here, bullish probabilities increase. If we drop in this direction, the be patient signal from this chart gets even stronger in the short run. The daily chart of the S&P 500 index as of a close on Friday, November 27th. This chart also aligns with the Copic curve analysis. It leans bullish for the most part, the flattish look of this 200 day here tells us that nothing has been resolved yet definitively in the short run. We could come in this direction, we could move in this direction, we could continue to drift sideways. Why is this leaning bullish? Well, we're above the 200 day moving average, we're above the 50 day moving average. We still have our double bottom that's intact. This is a bullish breakout here and this is a successful Retest. So from a level perspective, we really don't learn too much as long as the S&P 500 stays below this high here, which is 2116, or stays above 2020. If we understand what extreme bearishness looks like and extreme bullishness in many instances, it helps us understand the market scenarios that fall in between. So most scenarios are going to fall between maximum fear in 2008 and maximum bullishness here at the early stages of a new bull market. These are weekly charts. How does it look today? The weekly chart as of the close on Friday, November 27th, like many of the charts we looked at, is a mixed bag. We have a full bore bullish look. This looks more like this period here than it does this period here. 
the tentative part of it is we have not made a higher high yet, and we were basically flat on a week that is typically bullish from a seasonal perspective. Since there's no magical indicator time frame or moving average, the market model is highly diversified. Similar concepts here, weekly charts, we're just looking at longer durations in terms of the moving averages. A full bore bearish look is when blue, the fastest moving average, is on the bottom and the slopes of all of the moving averages are down and prices below. In this case, blue, the fastest moving average, is on top and the slopes, instead of being down, they're all up. And instead of price being below, price is above. The present day weekly chart as of a close on Friday, November 20. Seventh has a bullish look. You really can't see this here, but in this case, blue, the fastest moving average, has moved from the bottom to the top. And we pretty much have a flip here. Price is below here. Blue is on the bottom and all the slopes are down. Now we have just the opposite. Price is above. All of the slopes are up and blue instead of being on the bottom. And blue instead of being on the bottom is now on the top, is now on the top telling us that the probability of good things happening is better today than it was here, 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 or here. As we've discussed on Twitter and as well on short takes, the market's giving us some good guideposts and we're going to use them. They're still here. Daily S&P 500 as of the close, November 27th, our R1, this thin dotted line, resides in this case at 2092 and change you can round it up to 2093 we close below potential resistance at 2090 and change the probability of good things happening in the short run will increase if we can close above 2093 on a daily chart however potential resistance is more meaningful when we have resistance that is lining up on multiple time frames Using the same analysis or tool from stockcharts.com, the level here for R1 on the weekly chart is 2095 and change. We closed below it. Similar levels lining up on three time frames. The same tool on a monthly basis, R1 sits at 2095 and change. We closed on Friday at 2090 and change. Also, the highest monthly close was 2107, which is about 17 points above where we closed on Friday. The end of the month is right around the corner. So it's possible, I'm not saying it's likely, not a prediction, that we could make a new monthly closing high soon or in the next 30 or 40 calendar days. Next week, the market gets a lot of new information. Tuesday, December 1st, ISM Manufacturing Index, Fed Speaker. Wednesday, December 2nd, Fed Speaker, Fed Speaker, Janet Yellen speaks. And we also get the Fed Beige Book. Thursday, December 3rd, Fed Speaker, Fed Speaker. Friday, we have the always obsessed about monthly employment report that's going to be released at 8.30 before the market opens on Friday, December 4th. And then we have Bullard and another Fed speaker after the close. These are also reasons to keep an open mind about what's going to happen at potential resistance. Most of you already know that Ryan Dietrich puts out some outstanding work. A tweet from Ryan this week aligns with what we've been covering in recent weeks and what we covered this week since 1960 after a basically flat year where the s p 500 does not do much which is similar to where we are in 2015 right now the following year the average gain was 19 percent and the s p 500 was never lower following a basically flat year you can see the stats here that aligns very well with our recent analysis about new Fed rate hike cycles. And the takeaway there was difficult periods in the stock market are typically followed by easier periods. Difficult periods in the stock market, flat years, 
are typically followed by easier periods. These are the gains in the following calendar year. 2010, a more difficult period, a bullish probabilistic signal, the same signal that we have now in 2015, was followed by an easier period with more discernible trends. Therefore, all of this underscores the need to continue to stay the course and execute in a consistent manner. How do we track all of this and convert it into a usable and actionable format in a reasonable amount of time? The sub-models, we answer binary questions, some of them manually done, some of them programmed in Excel, and we also enter in unbiased and hard data. The sub-models allow us to get a handle on the market's current profile, and the master CCM market model then looks at the current profile, compares it to past profiles, and recommends a prudent allocation between risk assets such as stocks and conservative assets such as bonds. Conservative assets can consist of cash, bonds, currencies, or any number of investment options. If you'd like to learn more about the market model or our money management services, you can visit our website, follow along on Twitter, Facebook, read our blog, short takes, or watch past videos on the Shivako Capital Channel on YouTube. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.